Alrighty traders, good afternoon, good morning, good evening and welcome to this uh, great trio here between myself, Chris Tyson, uh, Chris Pulver and Tyson Clayton. We're going to go ahead and rock and roll this, uh, this, this afternoon. We got a lot to talk about, man. We got plenty to talk about. And um, we're going to be talking about the coronavirus. We're going to talk about the technical analysis, how the technicals have set up and actually told us exactly how the market's going to move. Even though we didn't even know that the news was going to go ahead and move the market the way it did, if you really look at the technicals from a long-term perspective like weekly or daily time frame, you can see that the markets really hits resistance and support, giving us great opportunities. Listen here, we've got a lot to chat about, but I'm going to go ahead and introduce my guests in today, which is going to be Chris Pulver and Tyson Clayton. Sorry, Tyson. And so let me go ahead and bring in the team right here. And the team is going to be Chris. Good day. How are you doing, my friend? Doing well, Gary. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. Yeah, fantastic. I appreciate it. Tyson, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. Happy crazy market day. <laughs> Happy That's crazy market day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So let's get started, guys. Let's see. We've got a lot to cover. We're going to do this here within 45 to an hour. Uh, but we definitely, definitely want to get to the details. So let's go ahead and uh, discuss the elephant in the room and... And, and it is the coronavirus, right? How that's affected the markets and how traders should be reacting. Now, let's talk about first thing number one. The coronavirus has taken place. We've seen a, a big, uh, a big effect in the uh, the Asian markets. In fact, the Tokyo market started off the kick about two weeks ago. We saw a big jump in the Tokyo market, and that really started spiraling things around because at the same time we had. Uh, not just, of course, the uh, the crash in the Tokyo market over, uh, at the weekend open, but we also had a U.S. oil gap as well. And so with those two happening at the same time, we saw the market on some pairs rallying up and then dropping down. And we've seen it move thousands and thousands of pips. In fact, just last night alone, we saw the market react uh, 2,000 pips. I'm specifically speaking about the pound Aussie dollar. It rallied up at the open a thousand pips up, then dropped down another two thousand pips, and then pulled back another you know six hundred pips or so, and it's busy working its way. It's been huge movements, right? Huge movements, right? And and so Chris, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to you first. Mm -hmm. What is it that we need to think uh, think about when we talk about the coronavirus and trading, right? Yeah. So uh, just before we started this session, Gary, you know, we were we were discussing, um, you know, this is these are my thoughts for the last couple of weeks. I mean, the coronavirus has made the markets uh, seem irrational, seem, uh, you know, like they, they, they've lost all sense and all, all sorts of, uh, of levels. I mean, look, I'm a pretty conservative trader by nature. I like to use bigger time frames and big levels. And the fact that I've been looking at, you know, 20 year lows, 10, 15 year lows. I mean, we're looking at levels that haven't been seen since 2008, 2001 or ever. If you look back on monthly charts uh, and the fact that some of those levels have been failing to the extremes that they have uh, certainly made me as a conservative trader kind of question what to do in the medium to long term. So the reality was the last couple of weeks for me has been all about pivoting into what is working. Uh, and I know that you know we were talking about that before we went live today, but what has been working is we are clearly, if you are looking at any chart, any single day, you are seeing one thing, and that is volatility, all right? Now, every trader for the last two or three years has been complaining. It just doesn't move. Everything's range bound. It's so consolidated. We, but we're, Where's all the movement at, right? So what are we seeing now? More volatility than you would ever want, okay? And now it's to the point where traders are like, it's too crazy. It's too volatile. There's too much movement. But we need that. We need movement for tra for trading. Yeah. And the fact that we can look, you know, I, I'm not really interested right now at this particular time in calling tops and bottoms. OK, what I'm sure. interested in is finding structure in the market. I'm interested in confirming direction with something that makes it easier to trade in a shorter time frame. So I'm very agile. I'm very flexible. And this week, this week especially has been all about scalping. It's super Simple, the, the way that I traded it, uh, I, I switched yeah. my trading room around, so we had a schedule that was accommodating the, the, the current market, uh, yeah. and we ended up having a great week. So, I, I mean, Tyson said it best when we were talking just before the session, it's like, we'll do whatever it takes. And that's what it's all sure. about. Like, we have to be able to be agile, flexible, and we have to pivot to what is working. And right now, I'm all about short term, and I'm all about taking advantage of this, this amazing movement that we haven't seen literally in years. And listen, and, and Tyson, I want to pass on to you as well and discuss it around the actual trading strategies that's really working well during this period. And, and I know for myself, 
I've got two type of trading strategies that I follow, right? I trade a, a position type trading strategy, and I know you have a couple of those strategies like turning point and that type of stuff. And then we've got trend based tra trading strategies. Um, I know for me, I've taken a pound in, and I'm just going to be real right here with my position trade strategies because they have maybe tighter stops. It doesn't have thousand pip stops. Uh, it, it does. It has been taking a little bit of a, a, a hurt, right? A, a little bit of a beating, but. Um, the trend trading strategies actually have been pretty solid when you look at support and resistance, right? What does your feel about that, Tyson? Yeah, they have been. And, and, and to hit on something that Chris just said, it's 2020. I rolled in and I, I was telling students the whole time, this whole year, that this year for me is about doing less of what doesn't work and more of what does. And just yeah. because something worked three weeks ago doesn't mean it works today. I mean, the markets nah. are moving so volatile. Um it's interesting that you say that because we've got to be nimble in our in our strategies, uh, Gary, because um, my swing trade strategies are very conservative in the way they enter. However, they are looking for bottoming formations to look for those ne that next trend. I always say I'm, I'm interested right. in what's next, not what has been. And yeah. uh, that hasn't really worked great, right? We look for those turning points. When those turning points happen, they're going to happen big. But what we need to be doing is we need to be shorter term, like Chris has been doing. I think, Chris, you've been getting up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and scalping the markets. And that's something that I have to start doing myself because that's where the money's made. Sitting in these positions, ultimately, there's no doubt in my mind, Gary, these positions are going to pay off. But I've been sitting in these positions, tying up margin and sitting and waiting and allocating to some other resources, allocating to some other, some other positions. But at the same time, I could have been waking up at four o'clock in the morning and generating more income. So it's about being more active and making sure that the toolbox is full of tools that are useful at this time. Right. Now, if you look at the chart, this is the pound, uh, this is the pound uh, Aussie dollar right here. And I think I think what Chris is doing by doing these short-term scalpings are fantastic, and I think it's definitely something we need to do, right? But the one thing that we have to also make sure about is that we don't get caught up in this uh, this hype that price is moving to a certain degree. Because a lot of traders would get caught up with this. If you look at the pound uh, Aussie right here, and and uh, uh, and you see the the resistance level of that trend line, as price started trading above that, traders are starting to think from a from a short-term and a scalping point of view, let's get in and start buying. So be very quick to get in and be able to take profit very quickly, but don't be that trader that gets caught up in, uh, hey, I'm going to stick this one out. This thing's going to go. And even when the market starts pulling back, say, I'm going to get married to this trade and I'm not going to go ahead and let this, uh, this market hit my stop and start moving their stops around because what's going to happen is <laughs> they're going to get beat up. And, he, and that's the last thing you want to do is start scalping on these type of volatilities and you're holding on to a position because you think and you're committed to a, di a direction. And the market turns around and actually it goes into the opposite direction very quickly. So get in, exactly. get out, take your profit. There's there's two things that came to mind real quick, uh, Chris and, and, and Gary. I want to hear your thoughts on this. There's two things that are working really well. It's trading very small size and being committed to a directional bias, but making sure that you have enough faith and small size in that position. If you are a committed swing trader like myself or being more active, those are the only two things you can do in this market. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I'd, like, I'd like to add to that. I mean, I'm looking at my trade log from my trading room this week. I've taken more losses this week than I've taken probably in the last year. But those losses were yeah. all tiny little losses, and they were insignificant because I wasn't interested in me being right. I was interested in me being right for the day. So trading on Monday, it was a profitable day. Trading on Tuesday, I gave it all back. Trading on Wednesday, extremely profitable. Trading on today, extremely profitable. But I took of my trades, I'm, I'm gonna count here. Uh, I had one down to the lows. That is, let's see, about 40, looks like about 40 trades this week, short term. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I took 11 losses, 40 trades, 11 losses. So that's not bad, 29 wins, 11 losses. I'll do the math on that. Yeah, 29 divided by 40. 72% win. I'm pretty happy with that, but I've taken more short-term losses than I have in a long time because I'm usually not a scalper. All right. But sure. I mean, look, when we have, I mean, literally let's just focus on the last 48 hours. I mean, we have seen, Gary mentioned pound Aussie, Euro Aussie, Euro New Zealand. We've seen literally, you know, 2000 pips in 24 hours and 48 hours on those currency pairs, you know, daily trading ranges. Everyone was, like I said, people were complaining. I was complaining. 
You know, <laughs> we can only get a hundred and some pips a day on the Euro Aussie or the Pound Aussie. I remember back in the day, blah, blah, blah. Well, now yeah. we're moving like 700 friggin' pips a day. Like you have to be willing to say, hey, I need to follow this flow. Like if there's any ounce of 700 pips in a day, you have to be able to take some of that. If you want to be sure. an active trader, if you want to be a, like the opportunities are there. That's all I'm saying. Like if you don't want to get up at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't blame you. All right. But when you watch the entire day go by and you're like, how do I not take advantage of that? Well, no. be a trader and get up and do it or, or yeah. have a system or strategy or a robot that does it for you. I mean, there's ways to participate. So um, I think until until we start to see things reducing, until we start seeing, you know, OK, we're back to those, you know, 150 to 200 pip days. Hey, if there's a 500 plus a day waiting for us. I want to be right at the front of the line, ready for this thing to take advantage or take advantage of the movements for sure. Yeah, they used to say, uh, you know, scalpers and active traders get in, they get paid and they go play. Now it's get in, get paid and go watch Netflix. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's no right. play. There's no play right now. <laughs> what else are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, but I must disagree with you guys in some way, right? And then, and, 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 and don't beat up the, the, the messenger right here. Now, uh, I agree. Getting into those uh, short-term trades and, and taking advantage of the short-term movement is great. It's a great way to do, to do it. But but I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've been looking at uh, a trading strategy based on swing trading and, and using a new trading system that uh, that's going to be uh, introduced to the students uh, in next week. And it's called Right Trader Max, right? And I've been using that system to be able to deploy when price hits resistance and support, but also when price moves through resistance or moves through support to go ahead and still swing trade it based on uh, based on support and resistance. And it's been doing very well. In fact, we're looking, I, I think I may even still have it up over here. Uh, here is, yeah, here is one of the things. So we're up around about, uh, uh, call it anything between one and 2% for the, uh, for the, for the period. And it's like, we're doing well through this period of uh, chaos, um, real, using real quick, still Gary, support thing, resistance. You yeah, saying what something? I'm saying on that is real quick on that. That's so important. It goes back to my point of diversification strategies because I'm going to use an example of, of my core strategy, my favorite strategy that I've ever developed, Turning Point. Turning point is looking for those support and resistance levels, and it's looking for defined turns. And so it's right. looking for that next move. So that's great in a market that moves in big ranges, but actually respects support and resistance. But when you're in a market yeah. that's not respecting the support and resistance level, you better make sure you have a true trending strategy, like a right trader or a six-figure max, something like that, that's actually going to ride those waves aggressively and continue to ride them until they're done. Yep, yep. And, 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 and you know, the thing is with regards to uh, swing trading and, and to scalping, they all got their own merit with inside the, the, the right environment, right? Because if you use a scalping system that doesn't work so well with the uh, with a training based uh, market, uh, it may be good, maybe bad, but you have to make sure that you uh, you know um, discern what type of environment you're in in order to be able to use the right trading approach for that system. Now, Chris decided that this it's time for a scalping right now. It's time to go ahead and take advantage of the the European breakouts um, and 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 he'll. And Chris, you, you can you can confirm this as well, but you've gone into one uh, session, I think it was the first session on Tuesday, and nothing happened because everything moved at around about 8 o'clock in the morning, right? And the, the New York uh, session opened up. So you can miss out on the, the run by picking the wrong times, but but still your approach, your mindset says, hey, listen, I'm going to go in at this time of the day. Of the day. I'm going to go ahead and trade. Nothing happens. I'm walking away. I'm not going to try and chase after anything. I'm just going to do what I need to do and fulfill the plan I've got uh, done, right? Yeah, and just to kind of recap what the week looked like is, you know, I followed the same strategy. I see a question that came in, what's the best scalping strategy? I mean, yeah. honestly, I, I would like everyone to, you know, have access to my recording from this week, like Wednesday's recording, Thursday's recording. I mean, if you watch the session, it's like, it's a really simple approach. I'm looking at like a one hour chart. I'm looking at really simple structure. And, you know, Gary, I know that, you know, we, we've talked about Right Trader Max and I know it's working, you know, fantastic for you in, in your room. And uh, I know you've been really pleased with the results because you're looking at these, you know, technical levels that you want to buy and sell from, but you're also right. acknowledging like it's blowing through some of those levels and you still have the continuation. You still have the swing. I mean, look, I took right trader down to a one minute chart. Okay. I mean, my one favorite minute. deployment I've had, seriously, I've had right trader for the last two years and I've been running it on like 30 minute charts, one hour charts, maybe 15 minute. To me, I thought that was pretty aggressive. This week was one minute charts. That's, but it, it was amazing. It was, I, I captured over 1600 pips this week. 
That's uh, that's wow. one of my biggest captured weeks in a long, long time. And one minute charts, and it was, and it wasn't, and it could have been a lot more. I mean, Gary, you know that we have the ability with that system to have add-on trades. I only took yeah. one trade at a time, man. One trade yeah. at a time. If I would have added yeah. on, it, it would have been a whole different ball game with probably you know two to three times as much profit. Hey, Chris, and just so, so that everyone knows, so what right? You're doing, what you're doing is very systematic. It sounds so. So I want to I want to talk about this. I think this will be good for students. I. Uh, I'm a swing trader because it fits my personality style. I, I'm a, I'm kind of an action junkie, but honestly, when I get up and I, and I try to trade, I don't enjoy it that much. Like for me, I don't enjoy like trying to be in. For, I'd rather set something up, walk away, let it do its thing. I like the analysis part of it. I don't necessarily like the execution part of it, right? But it sounds right. like what you're doing might actually be pretty attractive to me because it seems very systematic. Is that fair to fair to say? It, it it's yeah. very fair to say, and it's and it is like uh, look. Tyson, you have to you have to remember, like this is not my preference. You know, yeah. if I had my way, I sleep in, I place trades, I place pending orders, and I get paid on pending orders that I just set and forget. Yep, it's yep. not like that today. I mean, it's not like that this week. It's like we, it's like I had to actively get up. I I flip my trading room. We usually have sessions Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from eight to ten. This week we we're doing it from three to five, three to five a.m. for me. It's like, but I had a, a huge turnout. Everybody was grinding right there with me. And it was a really simple approach. So, I mean, as far as the systematic approach, we had rules set in place. Even today, I was not real fond of like, hey, yesterday we had an easy candle to look at a breakout. And we had about 600 pips of movement in the direction of the breakout, which is awesome. Like, take advantage of that. Today, the candle that we were looking at was over 600 pips. Okay? So, I thought, honestly, the day was going to be tied between range-bound trading. I thought we'd go from, you know, the high and low overnight was like 900 pips. I really thought we would just range-bound trade because the Asia session was so violent and so turbulent and so aggressive that the Europe session would be just kind of counteracting that. But instead, we had the Asia session active, the Euro session correcting, and then the Asia or the Euro to U.S. session continuing. So it became like this giant reversal that all happened within the last 12 to 24 hours. And, it yeah. just, and I said, like, look, if it breaks this level, these are the specific targets. And, and, and again, if you review the session or, Gary, if we talk about right trade, if you want to show the chart, there was a specific trade call, specific target for me on Aussie Swiss, Aussie Yen, Euro Aussie, Euro New Zealand, CAD Swiss, all today. So, and every so, single one of them, my chart alarms went off and hit the target to the pip. Wow. Well, let's just put things in perspective right here, all right? Let's get to the meat of potatoes and, and, and what I think students are really – dying for here is to say okay so you got all this chit chat about what are you doing how are you doing let's go ahead and see what it looks like in the real market and see what are you uh, what type of approach you're doing and um and, and you can go ahead and both tyson and chris go ahead and add as as i go along here but when i look at the chart and i um i, I want to go ahead and do some scalping and, and yes tr uh, chris used the one minute time frame and it's it's perfect because of this type of market movement you want to grab in and out trades very quickly put tight stops in and just make a profit and get out of the trade before things start really getting all wacky. Now, in my opinion, if I'm looking at a one minute time frame, you always want to go ahead and use a, a directional buy the chart that's higher than that time frame and go ahead and deploy it, uh, or sorry, go ahead and analyze it to make sure that you get, you've got the overall direction before going ahead and looking for a direction you want to go ahead and trade. Now, I know Chris, you may have gone in with a couple of trades on buy and sell, but but if you look at this chart right here, this is the pound Aussie dollar, right? And if I had to go ahead and just go to a 15-minute time frame and open up a 15-minute time frame, and, and we saw this big rally to the upside, just a simple trend line. There's a simple trend line going ahead and saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and deploy a trend line going across right here. When price goes down and takes out that trend line, comes back to retest it, what do we have? Again, we've got resistance, right? And so when you're saying that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and look to sell right here. We've got these tweezer tops right here on the 50-minute time frame. Now it's time to go ahead and start looking to sell. So at around about 3.45, I know you may have traded differently, but I'm just throwing some out there. So 3.45, traders, is 3.45, your thought is that, hey, I'm at resistance. Price is broken down. Price has come back to retest that big breakout, all right, or at least that big uh, bearish run. Price come to retest it, test the back side of the trend line. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go down to the one minute time frame and we just want to go ahead and sell. So at around about exactly 3.45, you are, you are going to deploy sells and anything you get. Now, I'm going to go in and explain a little bit about right trade and what it does and, and how, uh, how Chris is actually using it. And Chris, you can correct me if you change any settings the way I'm understanding how it was set up. So if I go to 3 o'clock this morning, 
And here is, uh, hang on, is that the uh, 3 o'clock? So we go by one, 1, 2, 3. We're going to be here at 2. So 2 in the morning. Yep, it's all the way here. Okay, good. So at 3.45 this morning, <laughs> there it is there. How, how the system works and how uh, Chris is trading and how I'm trading it in my trading room as well is that when you see uh, this red channel and the blue channel, all right, and you see price, uh, those are the three aspects that you're looking for. We're looking for the red channel, blue channel, and price. And if we see price trading below the blue channel and the red channel, it's a sell signal. Pure and simple. Now, Chris will give you a lot more details on this when we, when we get into the actual live classes on this. But this is how we're going to trade it. We're going to look to sell, all right? We're going to go ahead and sell on that break. We're going to place our stop losses above the last high right here. And we are going to continue to sell and we can add in positions. This is what Chris mentioned earlier on. Chris, you're adding on to that trade if you want to go ahead and add on, right? Correct. If you choose to. So what yeah. Chris will do is he'll go ahead and deploy the system. The system is going to be uh, going to be able to put you in on trades, all right, in that direction. And it's going to continue to add on positions every time it goes in and trades below the blue line again. So it adds on right here, adds on right here. And you can decide how many add-on positions that you want. But uh, euros all, here are all the add-on positions right here, okay? Now, remember, your stop loss is over here. You have a choice, like Chris did. He only took on one position, all right? And look at the stop loss. If you take a look at the uh, the measurement right here, we had a stop loss of approximately, can we take a few right here? Uh, we had a stop loss of, this was a 100 pip stop loss. Now, maybe Chris took a little side to stop, but it's 100 pips. Look how far the market moved down. We've moved 200 pips down, and I believe you had a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio on your trade, right? 2 Correct. to 1? Yep. So this means that the trade would have paid out here with 200 pips, all right? 100 pip risk, 100, uh, 200 pip target down here, all right? Now, remember, the trading ranges are that wide, you're going to be able to ga gain profit. Now, if you got out of that trade and you're looking for another entry point to get in on this, you would have gone ahead and said, all right, I'm going to go ahead and trade the next entry point. Next entry point would have come in, and let's say, let's say you're scalping. Here's the next entry point right here, and it would have given you a sell over here. Stop loss would have been 61 pips, market drop down, 50 pips, all right? Uh, next trade, uh, and this trade, by the way, th uh, the, the market went up. So whether you took your profit and got out, and I believe, Chris, you, you were jumping in and out, taking profits very quickly. Move to break even. I mean, if we're doing breakout sessions, especially when we're live, I mean, I'm typically moving stop losses to break even when we're 20 to 30 pips in profit. So I, I was a you know a big fan this week of, hey, look, we've got 20 to 30 pips. Let's move a stop at least to break even. And then we had yeah. these really nice pushes. Like uh, I think Wednesday when we traded together, we were in the Euro New Zealand and it was like within probably 20 minutes of being in the trade, we were up 55 pips. Uh, I wow. went ahead and moved my stop loss really aggressively. I said, look, you, here's the option. Either move the stop with me. We're going to protect this profit because it was like zero risk and 55 pips was offered and I moved my stop loss. But traders that trailed and I was like, look, just put your stop to this level and let it run, let it trail 130 pips within the next 30 minutes. Like the same trade, just it's if you were a little more patient and you just were a little bit more passive with that stop and not as aggressive, uh, it ran another you know, 80 pips up. So that's what can happen in these high volatility times. And again, like, I, I'm not saying that this is the best way to trade, okay? It, it can be a, a lot more effort than some traders are willing to put into it. And, and that's not a bad thing. I'm not calling anybody lazy. It's like, it is an effort to come in and trade this way. But the fact is, this you know, uh, the good thing is that we have the tools and resources and the knowledge to do it. The fact that we can fall back into these strategies or you know pivot into these strategies is, is huge because otherwise I would I, I would be sitting and waiting and I would be wondering like I hope this trade comes back or what do I do with this trade this trade this drawdown? You know, it's like I know that I have to do something active to offset. Like I'm in a situation right now where I know that I have some drawdowns, and so my job is to potentially take some of these profits I'm making short term and you know pair some of the losses like pair some of the drawdowns and just reduce some of my overall exposure and and not be overly committed to these big positions until i have a better sign of longer term confirmation which for right sure. now we're not quite seeing we have some close levels we had a great day today we're looking for some bottomings and tops but um, yeah. you know if we're not really getting that full confirmation yet uh, i can't say that uh, all of a sudden it's a it's a breath of fresh air and like everything's fine because it might not be like we might still see this sure. Uh, stock market selling off and all this crazy you know, with coronavirus and fear and all this crap that's been driving the markets the last couple of weeks. But sure. I just, sure I now, just take advantage thought. of it. I, I just had a thought here. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, 
you you were nice about it, uh, Chris. You said I'm not calling anybody lazy. Well, I'll call myself lazy. I, uh, <laughs> I, but here's the deal. I think you earned the right in this business to become lazier because you, it's not lazy. It's just you know what fits your style. You know what doesn't. Right. But here's what's so cool about the way that you're trading right now with with your your room. Um, we've got traders of all all sorts of experience levels. Those that have been in in the market for a long time. Those that are brand new. Your exponentially increasing their experience in the market because of the time frame you're looking at. So so you're you're trading more active with them. So they're getting so much more information quicker that's going to help increase their learning and, and their their skill level so much faster than trading in a swing trading style right now. So but also I wanted to just mention something. It seems like that strategy is not just a strategy that could work well for short term. It seems like it could be a pretty darn good swing trading strategy also. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. and, and like I said earlier, I mean, I, I took it down to a one minute chart because that's what's moving and that's what's giving me activity. I mean, if, I'm, if I've got a two hour window to trade, the one minute chart is where I was able to get some action. And so, you know, Tuesday, the lesson for me was I traded for a finite window. I traded for a couple of hours. We had a session from like 3 a.m. to 530 or so. And then I was exhausted. I went back to sleep. I woke up and I saw that everything continued to move. So my 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 learned lesson from Wednesday or from Tuesday to Wednesday was I'm going to go to bed earlier Tuesday night. I'm going to wake up and be up the whole session on Wednesday, and I'm going to let this system do what it does best, and that is keep trading. And so from 3 a.m. to 11 a.m., I'm just letting this robot work, and I just got to the point where I was taking 25 pips here, 25 pips here, and the robot kept entering based on confirmation, and the market just yep. kept going and kept going yep. and kept going and kept paying and kept paying. So I just I gave it a chance to work, so I didn't cut it off. I just – we have these, these, these flows, and – my point of that that topic or that that point was that I never really thought the right trader max or right trader system would be, you know, allowing me to go down to such small time frames and be as profitable as I've been. But the fact that it can and it is is incredible. I am way more comfortable with that thing on a, you know, a, a pattern. I mean, we all have talked markets and shop, but we've seen longer term trades. We all like to plan on longer term time frames. I would rather take the right trader system on like a 30 minute chart or a 15 minute chart and trade where I'm identifying a, a bottom or a, a support level that I can buy from and let the robot start taking buy trades. And that's what Gary's talking about with his deployment. So a higher time frame is my preference, but the lower time frame in it right now is just is just giving me the, the the results and the fact that I can, you know, start it up in the morning, be be monitoring it through the day and then turn it off. And I mean, the, the pips this week were crazy. I mean, I, I question. Yeah, question. Real quick, question on that. Um, and you might have answered this already, but I'm, I might have missed it. Did, so, you're are you doing selective deployment based on any type of analysis? Are you just saying, I just want to take what the market's giving me? The, this week it was take what the market's giving me because I was okay. literally boxing in one hour candles. It was it was a one hour breakout, like a one hour breakout. If we got the breakout, we follow that direction. Just go. Okay. And and for and and honestly, like look, you know, we just saw a flash crash. What Sunday Monday? But was it was it this this no no was it this no. week we saw the flash crash last uh, week no no last week two weeks ago last uh, week, yeah, yeah. Last, so, last, so last week yeah, two weeks we saw ago. that flash crash yep. so this week okay and and this is and we and I, I really thought that we had kind of nailed down like the price action on flash crashes and today felt like the markets have gotten a little bit smarter the markets know that retail traders are getting a little bit smarter and so the market pushed even further so going into sure. yesterday's session. Look, we were sitting at the high of last week's flash crash on the Euro Aussie, the high of last week's flash, cra flash crash on the Euro New Zealand, and I still wasn't directionally biased. Because I'm like, look, let's just trade what we get. If this market's going to move 100 pips, because we boxed it in, and what was amazing is from that little box on a one-hour chart, we still had two to 300 pips to the tops. We had thousands of pips to the bottom, and we actually got trades in both directions over the last two days. And they kept paying us to one side and they kept paying us again today. And so this week and, and going into tomorrow and going into the next week, like I'm not really directionally biased. If I'm day trading, I'm not really directionally biased because there's just so much volatility that I sure. don't have to be. I don't have to be directionally sure. biased. I'd love to say that, you know, the Aussie dollar is coming back to 7,000 or the Euro Aussie is going back and it's going to balance from four weeks ago, but it might not. But if we still see, you know, 200 pip days or 500 pip days or a thousand pip days, which is happening right now, then yeah. there there are ways to jump on and participate, so, like Tyson said, with what is flowing, like just go with the flow. Yeah. So let's go answer a couple of questions here. Uh, Steve's got a question here, and Steve says here, uh, my question is that I've been building up 
positions going bullish. He says, admittedly, I was over leveraged on a $3,000 trend account, and then here comes the bears. Now, my results was a 1 to 3 to a 2 to 3 loss overall. What would you suggest? Just bail on everything, pretty much. Um, so, so, so he said we he can't was suggest bullish. Did he, what did you he go into any details on what he's bullish on? No, and, and, and I want to say this. Um, we, we can't tell you what you can do, but I can tell you what we do, right? And, and what Chris does and what, 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 what uh, Tyson does. Um, so when you when you add it on to positions, I, this is my thought around adding on to positions. Adding on to positions should always have a place where you're going to call it a day and draw the line in the sand and say, I'm done. Because you have to, because if you just have an open checkbook on your stop loss, then you're pretty much giving your, your, your trading account to the, the, the market and saying, hey, do what you please, all right? If the market is against me, just clean me out. And so you always have to have a, a checks and balances, right? And so when you go ahead and you add on, add on positions, you've got to have a level that you're going to cut it out. Because, listen, here, if you're saying, well, I've got the psychological stop loss. <laughs> I've had psychological stop losses all my life, all right, when I first started trading. <laughs> but it's, the, the thing is, those psychological stop losses get influenced by, uh, by the market uh, moving to those levels, and then suddenly you go in and say, you know what, actually, I read up a little bit on the news. I think price is going to bounce back up. I think we're going to get a, re a retracement move. And you're always moving your psychological stop. So what you have to do is uh, you have to go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to draw the line of stand at that level. Now, if you have multiple positions, you could scale out of your positions to keep your risk overall down. And yes, if you're losing on some positions, but you're keeping some still in the game because you believe price is going to maybe bounce off a certain level, uh, that's okay because when it does bounce, you can recover, uh, recover your losses. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to build up these. And, and look, I understand completely about building up positions and taking some losses because target trading is all about that, right? And I've done, on my one trading account where I did trade a little bit more aggressive, I did take some losses off that account, but I've got positions still holding that I'm making, hopefully going to be making up my losses. And if I don't make all my losses up because of this big move that we had uh, and the strategy didn't work so great through this, uh, through this period, um, I know that I'll make back some and I've still got time to go ahead or still have capital to go ahead and work back my losses and then still go into profit for the year. So it's very important. I think it's very important that anytime you add on positions, always have a game plan and a strategy behind it to be able to protect your trading account because uh, uh, capital preservation should be your number one rule on all trading strategies. Capital yeah, can, I, can I say something about that yes, real quick? Tyson. True story. So I've got a, a, a couple small live accounts that I do some testing on strategies on. Uh, true story just happened uh, this week. I had to, uh, uh, my wife, uh, for anybody who's married, she's the one that controls the, the pocketbook. If I'm sure a lot of people are out there like the same same way. Um, that's in my relationship. I actually had to go to the wife and be like, hey, I'm going to um, uh, add some money to, my, to an account here. I'm going to borrow... Uh, at about 10%, but I'll pay it back in a few weeks at about a 10% interest because I had to add some money to cover some margin because of what you're just saying. And, and it was, here's the deal. I had the luxury of having cash on the side to be able to do this, right? I could pull money from other places and I, but a lot of people don't have that luxury and they get in the in a position where they've over leveraged yeah. and now they're being forced. And I talked about this. You guys remember me talking about this three weeks ago where I said, the issue with this market right now is when people go from de-risking to deleveraging. And that's sure. exactly what's happening right now is we're getting yeah. these capitulation moves, not because the market's out of whack and it's lost its mind. It's because people are being forced out. And, yes. and again, I have the luxury of pulling from different places and saying this, and, and, and a lot of traders don't have that. Perfect example. Aussie dollar has been a horrible position for me. I'm still in it because, again, I could pull from different places. I'm still not over leveraged. In the grand scheme, it's a very small position for me. But I did have to reallocate some re resources into an account be of, that I have that position in. But here's the deal. I look at the chart, and what you were just saying is so true. I look at this, and, and I know as a professional trader, I should have said, okay, well, if price breaks below 60, I'm going to get out of the trade. Doesn't mean I'm going to short. But I'm going to get out and I'm going to save myself two or three hundred, two or three hundred pips because there's a clear pathway down to about 58 to 57. And I could have started. But instead of saving myself that money, I stayed in. And yeah. so what, what we need to do, the point of what Gary was just saying is have a plan in place. And just because you take the trade off doesn't mean you're, you're, you're completely wrong. It just means, you know, take a breather 
And maybe, just maybe, and, and I always look at this as a stop. If I take a stop, I'm convinced the price is going to continue to go in the direction I was wrong, right? So if I take, if I'm long the Aussie dollar and, and I take a stop, it's because I believe it's going to fall more and I can get a better price. It doesn't always sure. mean that I'm going to flip around and go short, but I believe, I, so I should have taken a stop at 60 and I should have said, okay, well, I'm going to wait to 57 and that's where I'm going to load up again. But I didn't. Sure. I sat in it, and I had to add money to a margin account. So um, I think that's super great advice, uh, uh, Gary. I think it's really important. Don't look at a, at a stop loss as a, I'm wrong, I suck. Look at it as, hey, I'm going to take a breather. I'm going to see if there's a better price that I can get in maybe in the same direction. Sure. you got to learn that, you know, sometimes you're going to be wrong. And sometimes, yep. and not just necessarily uh, on the trade direction, but sometimes you'll be wrong about your entry. Your stop's going to be at the wrong place because of your entry maybe being late. And, and taking losses is, is part of trading. It's to how you take your losses. Are you taking big losses? Because anyone in my trading room says, hey, Gary, I, I lost big time on this trade. I'm like, what? Swipe left. No, I'm just kidding. I, I tell him that, hey, listen here. If you're taking on big losses, it's because you started off with bad equity management. If you take a loss and say, Gary, I took a couple of losses. I'm like, cool. You know, that's part of trading. That is what it is. But don't ever post in my chat room that you are losing big time because if that's the case, then that's all on you. You've got to manage that risk. Now, guys, let's, let's do this. I want to go to actually some charts. I want to, some traders to go ahead and uh, we, we're watching the chat as a uh, year in the, the, uh, hey, the broadcast. Before you move so we're watching on, Gary, the chat. Can I mention one thing? There's two rules that I always, sure. I always I, real fast to end this. Uh, there's two rules. I always say when a trade no longer technically makes sense, get out. Okay, that, Absolutely. that, should, be, that should be obvious. And, and yeah. number two, if I can convince myself I can get a better price than I'm in right now, then why am I in the trade? Right, right. And That's also, it. very importantly, also, Kurt Tyson, I want to add to that is don't convince yourself that this trade is better or this trade is, is good. Or if the market's going against you, don't try and look for things to make, make yourself believe that I should stay in this trade and then start moving your stop losses. Now, if your stop loss is there and you think this trade's still going to go, sure, stick around and say, hey, I, I've already accounted for that loss. I can wait it out now. I believe that based on the news, things could change for us. But don't go ahead and say, well, I'm moving my stop loss now. I'm just going to allow the market just go free to eat up my trading account. All right? Yeah. I, I would like to Let's, add one thing to just chime in on this whole topic. You know, yes. Look, I think that what is important right now is you find, if you find yourself in trouble and in drawdown and you think that it is unmanageable, the best thing you can do is be willing to take the short-term sacrifice. And if your short-term sacrifice is, is clearing up some of that margin and taking some losses, that is okay. All right? Because what you don't want to do and what traders can't afford to do is tie up all that margin and watch it dwindle and watch it disappear. And then one bump further that goes further against you and all of a sudden your margin turns to zero. Yeah. Too many retail traders make that mistake yeah. and too many retail traders fail on massive losses. So this, yeah. I mean, and this is my situation. I'm in a couple of trades. I'm literally in all my trades. I'm only in three positions that I have a lot of entries on. Three positions. I'm in Aussie, Swiss, Aussie, New Zealand, Euro, Swiss. Those have a lot of entries. Like between the three of them, there's probably 30 trades. But of those 30 trades, they're all small. They're all scaled in. And, you know, I have a broker that allows me to close out some and take some partial losses. I took like a 2% loss last week. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But that 2% yeah. loss, I have margin that I can wait to apply later. I have, you know, and, and look, we're, we're talking about charts like Aussie Swiss just blew through 20 year lows. Okay. Yeah. Euro Swiss, we're coming into 106. I mean, it's like we've got a fifth wave move. We got support on a channel. We've got, I've, I've only seen this one indicator print seven, six times in 30 years, and it just printed a seventh, which means I'm looking for divergence and oversold conditions, and I'm looking for the Euro Swiss to find some semblance of a bottom. Uh, the other one was, I said, Aussie, Aussie, New Zealand, 20 year lows. We're right at sure. it on a currency sure. pair that has, you know, the, the same interest with Aussie, New Zealand is essentially the same currency pair. It's just, you know, who kind of gets the upper hand in the short term. They're both tied to China. Uh, their rates sure. are now the exact same with interest rates because the RBNZ just cut. So it's like, those are my three big positions. Now I'm figuring out how it's best for me to manage that trade and make sure I keep my margin available so I can apply it to short-term trades or I keep my sure. margin available so I can apply it to the position trades. But you, if you have to take a sacrifice now, look, I would be totally fine and comfortable taking a 5% to 10% loss on my account and know that I can make that back over the next nine months. We have so much trading ahead. Don't let this short-term irrationality be the reason that you blow up your account and have to start over. Yep, yep. 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 And, and there's a couple of questions here that's already come through. So let's go ahead and take a look at some, uh, some charts right here. And I believe the Aussie Swiss was one of the uh, charts. Now, as we go through these different charts, uh, Chris and, and Tyson, 
please be feel free to go ahead and chime in and just comment on what uh, your thoughts are. But let's go through a couple of things here. We've got a trader that's uh, requested to look at the uh, the Aussie Swiss, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the Aussie Swiss. I'm going to move away from the one hour time frame, Chris. Um, but I'm going to go to the Aussie Swiss right here. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what the uh, the bigger picture looks like right here. I'm going to move this actually to a fifth to one hour time frame right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and move to the daily. Now, uh, th the reason why I always go to the daily time frame is because it can really tell us what's going on with the market. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to clean up this chart. And I want you guys to tell me whether you guys agree or disagree on this setup right here. So here it is. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, firstly clear that up. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and clean this up right here. And what I'm going to do is I, I, I'm going to look for support and resistance. So, and I don't have to go ahead and, and, and bring in some long-term support and resistance. Uh, if I want to do that, that's fine. But I really want to go ahead and look at what the market's doing just from its recent move. So I, I go ahead and connect these highs right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just extend it out so I can move it across. I extend it out. Now, when I go ahead and extend that high, I'm going to go ahead and move down. And as I move down, I, I noticed that this would have been my support level in the year where I would have looked to buy back up again. Uh, clearly that broke. And then as the, the market went ahead and moved further down south, here's my, notice I'm looking for those lows there. So there's the low right here coming from those lows. Then if, the go, if you go ahead and place it over here, there's the next support level. So as I go ahead and move these, this trend line across these lows right here, now always looking at the left-hand side. So as I'm going through this part right here, I'm looking for these lows here and to connect my parallel line and, and that's all I really want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and move this again down there. So now I look at this level right here and I see, okay, price has come back to retest, has gone through it. But now if I go ahead and zoom in, price is moving back up again. So when I see price moving back up again here, then I know that price wants to move back up to a resistance level. So what I'll do is this, I'll go ahead and bring in a line going up here and I'll say, okay, uh, where did the market test the most? Well, there's a test here, and if I bring it up a little higher, there's a test here which has got multiple tests. So here it could be a possible level of resistance, and here is another one. So that, so now that I look at the daily, I now look at this and I say, okay, so we're hitting support here, and market may go ahead and confirm that. So we're looking at this saying, if price closes back above this level of uh, support here that was previously resistance as price was trading below that, then I maybe think to, think about price moving back up north. Now look at the opportunity. The opportunity is, you know, 420 pips. Now I'm looking at a 420 pip move to the upside. So what I would do is I'll go down to the lower time frame. Just what Chris was doing, <coughs> excuse me, not maybe to the extreme of the one hour time frame, uh, so the one minute time frame, unless you are scalping during the uh, the the uh, the appropriate sessions. But I'll go to this right here and I'll start looking for a time frame. That's giving me the sign that I need. And this is the 15 minute right here. Notice how we are above, all right? We're above these uh, blue and red line. So what does that tell me? That tells me that the 15 minute time frame has started to change trend. So what I'm gonna do is gonna do just like I did in the last time, uh, the larger time frame. I'm gonna go ahead and say, as long as price is staying above this channel right here, all right? I'm gonna trade this going long. So what I'm going to do is as price comes down to this level here, test the support level, will it be the uh, the EMAs right here, test here, I'm going to think bullish. So coming into the uh, the Asian session, coming into the European session, I'm going to think about taking my 15 minute time frame and deploying that system bullish. Now, what does that look like? Well, we've got different types of settings, right, that we're going to go ahead and trade. And, and my, my, my approach would be this, when, when the market comes to this level, and I want everyone to be clear on this right here. When price comes here and I say I'm deploying bullish, all right, it's not going to enter me immediately into the trade. It's going to wait until the conditions of that logic is lined up. And when the conditions, of the con the conditions are lined up based on the logic with inside the robot, it's then going to go ahead and place a trade and manage that trade for me. But I've already done my homework. I've already assessed what the market's doing on the larger time frame, uh, taken my directional bias, then gone down to a lower time frame, which I like it to you. I like to call that a geared down trading approach, and go down to lower time frame, find the opportunity on the time frame that suits that condition, 
and then go ahead and trade it. Now, this may be something that Chris will do. Go ahead. Chris might go ahead and say, hey, I'm looking at the 15-minute the, the, um, um, the time frame. That's my directional bias. As long as you stand above this trend, he's going to go down to a one-minute uh, one time frame and trade that going up long towards the top of the channel right here. And that will be his trade for the early morning session. Uh, not to say that this is the current sphere that you're focused on, but if it had that sort of setup. Uh, would I be correcting my assessment right here, Chris, if I'd said that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would always prefer to use some some context and perspective of a higher time frame. So uh, the way you yeah. have everything mapped out, I mean, look, I mean, the, the way that we have been going and, and trending so aggressively on the Aussie pairs in general, against the Aussie in general, um, you know, I wouldn't be terribly surprised as if this is like a little sigh of relief, but we come back in and we, we pressure those lows again and we pressure those highs again. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I, I still believe that the Forex market is still one of the most efficiently balanced markets, and we are so far out of balance that, you know, I'm looking for the end of the quarter, uh, which is a week and a half away. Uh, if we can kind of get the purging over with. I mean, Tyson and I were talking earlier about, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I was joking with some friends this week about, you know, maybe we're just pricing in the recession. And the reality is like, that's kind of what's been happening. You're looking at some, you're looking at some of these movements in the stock markets that have not been witnessed even, even worse than 2008, even worse than 2001. Like the, the trajectory and the velocity that these pairs have been dropping, the stock market has been dropping has in my career has not been seen. And so it's like, it's almost like the writing is on the wall. Like, Hey, get it all over with, like, let the bears price everything in ahead of time. And, you know, I know that there is definitely some pain and grumbling possibly ahead, but um, from, and I'll say this for, for like a sliver of hope and optimism from the depths of these ugly trades that you're looking at position wise or long term, there will be some of the best opportunities in the last 10 to 20 years. So you're, like the best opportunities of my career are sitting right here in the charts right now. It's just yeah. really a matter of setups, confirmations and time for sure. What do you think Tyson on this as well? Uh, 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 I agree completely. Um, do me a favor real quick. Go to, I'm yes. going to show you. Uh, so I'm a big fan of candlestick close structure, meaning how does the candlestick close within the overall range? Uh, very, very important. Kind of tells um, some psychological points on, on what the market's looking at. So look at a weekly chart. This is a little bit of a longer. Again, I'm going to switch back to swing trading style for a second. But I want you to go to a weekly chart, Aussie Swiss, and I want you to mark, um, go back to, Scroll back a little bit, and I want you to put a, a, a vertical line on December 30th, 2018, and August 4th, 2019. And the okay. reason why I want you to look at those two is because what happened was we had two weeks prior to that, the two weeks prior to those two bars, we had flushes down that closed below their one-third level of the overall range of the, the, the bars, uh, on those bars. And so, so we got day? August, December 30th, December 30th, 2018. And August 4th, 2019. And so those bars there were flush down bars that closed essentially right there. Yeah, that, that basically bar right there. So those were those were after flush down weeks, two consecutive flush down weeks that closed below their one third level of the overall range. Then that week right there, those two weeks that are marked are the weeks that essentially ended up putting in kind of a, a kind of that capitulation low reversed and closed on the upper half of the bars for the week. Right. Why I mention that is because the same exact pattern is happening this week. So it's very simple. Here's my decision that I would make on the Aussie Swiss. If the Aussie Swiss, so I'd measure this week's range from high to low. If we close, and right now, that would be if we close above the halfway point on this week's bar, then I believe we're going up. I think that we have a very clear shot up to that gap up to 62.20. So essentially the way I look at this is if we close this week above 56.42, then we're gonna go up to 62.20 and all, maybe a straight line type of move because we fell so fast, this is gonna be a very aggressive move back up to fill those gaps. So essentially what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the structure of how this week closes um, in comparison to the overall range. And all I wanna do is I wanna see, is it gonna close above the halfway point? If it does, that's a potential sign for a bottoming formation and then start to go in and look for those gap fills. I love it. Gotcha. And, yeah. and it's really, and, and, and that is uh, basically just saying, hey, listen, yeah, I'm using this strategy as a support or resistance level right here. So 50% of that move, if price moves uh, back above that and close up back above that, that's my signal to say, hey, this is a support, maybe call it a hidden it's support. It's basically a basically psychological shift. It's basically sure. looking for those capitulation, those flush out moves, and then signals of that psychological shift 
and waiting for the close of the bar. Once you get that sign of the psychological shift to close above the halfway point after a mat, you know, couple week progressive move down, that's typically a, a very high quality sign of at least a short term reversal in a way. Let's let's just be real. Let's just be real here with regards to how these banks work. And I'm going to go back to the uh, pound Aussie right here. We'll come back to this again and, and just get a good, clear understanding of exactly how banks work. Right. Banks are there to get cheap prices. That's how they make their money. And they know where all the orders are sitting. They know where the majority of the orders sitting. So banks are typically trading against retail traders. They don't they don't really care much about you as a retail trader because they they trade you for the masses, right? And so uh, when you look at this type of setup right here, when is the best when is the best time to sell this particular move right here? You know the best time to sell is when price moves above that previous high. That's the best time to sell. Why? Because that's when banks are going to start leveling in. They're going to start leveling in when price takes out that major high. All right, the, even though it's a candle high. The, that's where banks are going to go ahead and start getting in on the trade. And the reason why they're going to get in on that trade is because they know that retail traders are going ahead and they're stacking up here. They're trying to sell the market, looking for the tops, and they're placing their stop losses up here. Those traders that have psychological stops, all right, they're going to start panicking once price gets above that level. And so they're going to start getting out. Once they start getting out and the banks start getting in, it's just a matter of timing before they start offloading everything in. Because remember, banks have to come under the radar. They can't go ahead and put in billions at one given time. They come in in trances of X, Y, Z, and they go ahead and they put in, put in, put in. So they're building up their positions to a point where now it's time to go ahead and crash. And so when you see this big move to the downside, that's because retail traders have taken out all their losses and big banks are now in the opposite direction, busy trading the down. This is that exact same pattern that I just talked about in the Aussie Swiss. We've got two weeks above, uh, above yes. the third level close. So essentially, you could just measure that out look at the 50% mark, that's your short level. And then to make it even more specific, you could basically look at that top 50 portion of this week as your complete sell zone. For next week, you just say, if we get into that top 50 portion, that's I'm going to sell every opportunity I can in that top 50 portion. Yep. There it is there. I like it. And, and look how that is also confirming that we're right at the top of that train line as well. Resistance at the yep. train line. It's got that 50% bar. And uh, it's confirming prices down. So, so I guess the, the, the trick of the matter, well, not the trick, but the, the, the game plan on this right here would go ahead and say, hey, let me go to my lower time frame, man, put up a one hour time frame, 15 minute time frame, whatever weapon of choice, all right, because there's a lot of weapons over the, uh, that you can use here in the market, but use your weapon of choice. Mine would be trend line channels, right? So looking at the trend line channel right here, this would be my trend line channel right here. So I'm looking to look at this particular pair and say, hey, if we are uh, if we are in this channel, and this is what it looks like right here, if we're this in this channel and we're at resistance right here, I'm going to start deploying my trading system bearish, all right? And the reason why I'm going to trade my system bearish is because if price stays below here and reverses to the downside, we're in and we're selling. But if price stays here and blows through this, all right? My trading system that I use, if it's a one hour or a 50 minute time frame, or whatever it is, they say I use the one hour system. I need to have my system confirm its signal. All right. Yep. Now, if you can take a look here, here right trader max, would, uh, it has a late entry signal, which means that price has to go below here, or at least the, uh, uh, the EMA has to go below here before it confirms the, se the sell. So which means if I want to be a little bit more aggressive on my entry point, all I got to do is gear it down to the next time frame. Go ahead and say, I'm going to go ahead and gear this down to a 50 minute time frame. And now look and see if we've got the same sort of setup right here. Now, can you see that the trend is now confirmed bearish? So we have the 50 minute already confirmed bearish. Now, all we need now is to go ahead and confirm. It's the, here's the trend line. Go ahead and confirm that price is moving to the downside. And so what, what's going to happen is, I want to say I want to sell all day long, maybe put my stop above the one hour high to protect myself. So if price does move in the opposite direction, I've, I've got a higher stop that I don't have to get stopped out quickly. I don't want to get in and out, in and out of trades and losing and losing, uh, you know, 20 trades in a row. I don't want to do that, but I don't mind going in and entering a trade, keeping my stop outside the way, give it a bit of room to move. All right. But then eventually going down towards my backside of the trend line right here. And that opportunity here 
would look something like this, right? Would look something yeah, we like this. Nice we take the high. Forming too, so that's a, that's a nice looking trade right there. Yeah, that's a sick, that's a, almost a 750 pip. If you go further down, probably 800 pip trade. And your risk on this, if you do place it above the uh, one hour high, you're looking at probably about 300. Oh snap! All right, so what you may want to do is you may want to use tight. Oh, actually, my bad. We've actually got a high here. I, I missed it. There's the high right there. Yep, that's it there. So if we take that high and we get it on the trade when it goes bearish right here, then you may end up looking at maybe a 100 pip stop. So a 100 pip stop for a 700 pip target is, uh, is, is, is definitely decent enough to trade. Well, I'll take that all day. Yeah, absolutely. So there, there is an opportunity. There is a setup there, in my opinion, and Chris and Tati, you could both go ahead and say either thumbs up or thumbs down, right? This, this, in my opinion, would be a trading opportunity to go ahead and say trades would, uh, this market may go ahead and continue to move down south, and that would be a great setup right there. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. I thumbs like up. it. I, I wouldn't place my stop so tight. I'd trade smaller, but I love the trade. All right. And, and, and that's fine, right? Putting your stops uh, putting your stops 200 pips. You can have fixed stops yeah. if you want to say, hey, I want to put 200 pips away. Keep it really out the way. And that will uh, reduce your your uh, your lot size as well, all right? Because remember, when you trade with equity management, you always want to make sure that you're, you're risking a percentage. So whether you trade with a 100 pip stop like I would do or a 200 or 300 pip stop like Tyson would do, your risk percentage is always going to be the same. So you're risking the same. The only difference is between my entry and stop, or at least my stop placement, is that my target will be rich quicker, but I'm also at higher risk being stopped out if the market is going to be a little volatile around that area. Where Tyson will stay in his trade, he'll take longer to get his profit target because he's looking for a risk reward ratio. If, we, if we're both looking for the same risk reward ratio, like one to three, then he'll be looking at a, if he had a 200 pip stop, he'll be looking at 600 pip target. If I'm looking at a 100 pip stop and I'm chasing after three to one, then I'm looking at a 300 pip target. So the risk reward ratio is going to be the same, but the, obviously the time that profit is, uh, my, my trade will be profiting, would be a little bit shorter than what Tyson would be. And that's perfectly fine. It's all based on your comfort zone, right? What other currency pairs? Let's go ahead and see um, what other currency pairs do we have right here that we can go ahead and address. Um, anyone else want to go ahead and post a currency pair? Please go ahead and use the chat to go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Um, you know what I also want to take a look at? I want to go ahead and take a look at US oil and I want to take a look at dollar index. Uh, we've got probably about two minutes left. Uh, so guys, so we haven't got much time on this, but let's go just take a look at the visuals on dollar index. And here it is right here. And I'm going to go look at that weekly. Woo! Look at that weekly. Wow. I'm going to move it down to the daily. <laughs> daily looks not, not any better, right? But this is the deal right here. If you look at the, uh, the the setup, and actually I do want to go ahead and break down the weekly right here. I want to show something right here that I think a lot of traders have missed out on, right? They've missed the the, the details uh, on this particular trade right here. And I'm not getting as much data as I'd like to get here to be able to show what I want to show here. Hmm. No, it's not. I'm not getting the right data right here. All right, so here's the dollar index, here's the weekly time frame. Let me go back to the daily. Let's go back to the daily right here and take a look at this, the, the, the midterm, uh, midterm rally that we've seen right now. This midterm rally now is just recently taken out that high right here. All right, there it is there. Let's go put it in. All right, there it is. What are your thoughts, Chris? Uh, well, let's go with Tyson. Tyson, what are your thoughts on the dollar index right now? Uh, my thoughts are you go on a, a monthly chart and we are sitting right at a phenomenal monthly supply level that, uh, that I would be absolutely shocked if we blow through. Now, we could get through it ultimately, but there's almost no chance in my mind, and there's always a chance, but there's very little chance that we're just going to blow through this level. So uh, this makes me uh, uh, more excited about my Aussie dollar long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yep, because I'm I'm expecting, listen here, dollars, uh, everyone's running to the dollar because they're moving into cash, right? Uh, th this is obviously the um, the pandemic that's currently happening right now. The virus has really taken over everyone's fear right now, and everyone's getting out of stocks, getting into currencies, or getting into uh, cash, and it's, it's creating this big, strong rally in the dollar. Now, 
as things start slowing down, the panics are slowing down out in uh, Asia, in China, and we've been hearing that the lights are coming on, some people are going back to work, we've seen um, uh, businesses open up, Apple, in fact, uh, a week ago opened up the offices already. So as things start settling down and we start seeing the Tokyo market uh, uh, start to regain a little bit of gains and not see these big, uh, big jumps that we've seen over the last uh, few weeks, we, we know that we're going to get back in. People are going to get back into the trading environment again. And things are going to start slowing down the dollar index. I see dollar index long term, big time bearish. Uh, I really do. I actually posted a video on my YouTube channel uh, just uh, yesterday uh, speaking about the dollar index in U.S. oil. And I do anticipate dollar index stalling and then falling. And actually, sadly to say, falling strong. Um, but Chris, what's your views on that? Well, don't say sadly, because I would love to see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, we've been, we've been actively talking about that for the last couple of years. Um, you know, I, I'm just going to be real honest. The, the dollar index in general is probably one of the wildest trades and swings I've seen in a long, long time. I mean, you look at the euro dollar that reflects that dollar index and you see it go, you know, we had one of the best squeezes, you know, and what makes me mad about the euro dollar is I had a lot of traders that, you know, had committed to the 108 level. I just went ahead and didn't buy it. I'm like, you know what, maybe this thing slides down to the, the ranges at 105, 104.50 before we get that big squeeze. But I did say we're going to get more volatility. 108 was a nice low, it was a nice round number, and it was a French election gap from 2017. We had this giant run from 108 to 117. I know traders were salivating at the retest. We're going to test the backside of the channel. We're going to buy it again at 112 and 111. It's now down below 107. We go oh, yeah. from 108 to 115, from 115 down to 106 and change. Like the dollar index has been crazy. However, looking at the long-term charts, you know, Tyson mentioned the, the long-term levels, the big level supply. I'm looking also at the monthly chart. You know, I, I mean... From a technical standpoint, and this is what we continue to go with, is from a technical standpoint, I see a hidden level of bearish divergence right now. On a daily chart, with this big spike to the upside on a daily chart and a weekly chart, I don't have any momentum that supports that move. We also have overbought conditions on multiple time frames. So I'm not calling the top right now, but I think if we show any signs of stalling and indecision, I think that's a great time to look at forming some highs and getting a head start on some of these really nice dollar weakness moves. So can I yeah. say something real quick? Um, I agree 100%. I do want to go on record and say that I am not a long-term dollar bearer. I am a medium-term dollar bearer. However, I do not think this risk-off trade is anywhere near done. Um, I, sure. I, I just don't. I, I, and and as, mar as, as mar markets continue to fall, risk-off continues to come in until the S&P hits 2,000. Um, and I think we're going to bounce up probably 10, 15 percent. And then we're going to see a, a flush down again. It, go back and look at the 2007 uh, pattern that happened into the financial collapse. It's very, very similar um, sure. to what's happening right now. And so I'm not necessarily a dollar bear yet. Maybe in a year I will be a super dollar bear. I think we're going to sell off probably back, back down to some some good levels, probably a pretty decent size sell off. We're going to rally again. That might be the last gasp. And then uh, setting up into next year, I'll, I'll get really bearish. All right. Lastly, lastly, U.S. oil. We've got to speak about U.S. oil. U.S. oil right here, I see it in a wedge. All right. And actually, it's a rising wedge because this came off the, the bottom down here. So we've got this wedge. I don't care which way it's going to break, but I know that price tests this the, the wedge five times before we see breakout. And if you take a look over here, here we go. We go one, two, three, four, and five. Sorry, four and five down here. So I'm expecting U.S. oil to action us. In the video yesterday as well, I spoke about 20. Uh, uh, I spoke about 21 being the low. I said if price drops down, we may get down to around about uh, 18. But we see the low of this right here was 20. So it was in between 20 and tw uh, 18 and 21. And I said we're going to see a bounce back up to 40 dollars or 42 dollars a barrel. And then if it breaks that level, which I think it's going to do that, maybe a little bit of temporary resistance, it's going to go ahead and continue all the way back up to $60 a barrel. Um, so I believe that we've hit bottom on U.S. oil. I think the negotiations will go back on the table. They will come up with some idea of how to be able to move forward and get price back up again. Gary, I think this is the exact pattern in the entire stock market, in the entire currency markets. We've had risk off. That's over for probably a little bit of time. We're going to see these snapback rallies. However... Those rallies are going to set up for that next flush down. I am telling you, I think I think that next wave down is going to stall at that 45-50 level, 
and flush down maybe to 10. But yeah, I think sure. you're 100% spot on right now. Perfect. Chris, your, your final thoughts on the oil? Yeah, I mean, like I said, we started this session off and the, the feeling of, you know, having flash crashes and gaps that we've seen two weeks ago to now and having the market just, just run right through them like they weren't even there, that's a very odd thing to do. So today really felt like the extremes. It really felt like I think Tyson is spot on by saying, look at the daily, look at the weekly closes this week. I'm also a big fan of looking at, you know, this week's close, next week's close as we head into the end of Q1. And, you know, and maybe I'm I'm trying to be an optimist here. I mean, the U.S. right now, we've, we've enforced, you know, statewide mandates. We're looking at social distancing. We're trying to curb the coronavirus. Look, I've never seen a disease, a virus, cripple the markets like this. And the reality is, I, I and I believe this, you can look at malaria, SARS, Zika, H1N1, AIDS, none of them have been solely responsible for the crippling of the markets. Like this has sure. been a long time coming. OK, sure. this is not about the coronavirus, but yeah, the coronavirus is very real and cases are climbing. But the reality is the news cycle hasn't changed. Everything sure. is very pessimistic. Everything is still scary. Everything is fear, fear driven. And look, if we're finally turning the corner with some social distancing, if we're finally turning the corner with a celebrity like Tom Hanks and his wife that can show recovery from the coronavirus, it's like I think people need some optimism out there. So if we start to notice that we have cases and recoveries, and that starts to actually pop into the news cycle. And we can show that, look, people are beating this, all right, as opposed to more cases, more deaths. You know, it's like sure. the news cycle with these capitulation moves, with these extremes, with these flash crash levels, with these oversold conditions. I mean, you're looking at a perfect, uh, you know, I, I keep saying perfect storm, but that's what it feels like. It's just like this perfect brood move of retail traders getting crushed to a certain level. You could feel that today. You can see it with the retracements and the movements. And I think we're at least due for a little bit of relief. And looking at the higher time frames on the stock markets, we've had that 30 to 35% correction. We're still looking at weekly structure that's still holding for the bulls. And sure. I think we, we have a rally. I mean, and again, I'm not looking at it to call highs. I'm not saying we're going to retake the sure. highs from February, but at least make a sigh of relief that we've got, you know, all these mechanisms in place from central banks now, stimulus package going out, countries, the globe is taking this pandemic very seriously. So sure. from that standpoint, the world is trying to offset the threat of a financial crisis. If we can, sure. if we can solve the public health crisis right now, we can solve and prevent, at least for now, the financial crisis. All right, well, guys, that wraps up our uh, session today. I want to appreciate. I, I want to just uh, show my appreciation here, uh, uh, Chris. Thanks for your thoughts and your uh, your uh, your views about the market. Tyson, thank you very much for your views and and, and remarks about the market. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and close off with this. So we, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, make sure that we get a couple of these uh, sessions going uh, on a week-to-week -week basis. But this is what I need you to do next time we come together, right? Come uh, to the uh, uh, come to the, uh, the the sessions with some uh, some trading ideas that you may want to go ahead and share with us. Maybe some currency pairs that you want us to go into some deep uh, technical analysis. Because I'd love to go ahead and sit down with you, have a a conversation with with Chris and, and, and Tyson and go through and break down a trading opportunity that they may, they may be in or maybe looking at or maybe just can give you some advice of what they think about that particular pair. Also, a couple of things I want to make sure that you've got. Number one, make sure that you have uh, uh, access to the webinars next week. Um, check out your email. Right Trader Max is going to be a, a great product you want to get your hands on. Get into the trading rooms, my friends. Look what Chris is doing in his trading room. Tyson is doing great things in his trading room. Myself, traders are excited about the way the markets are moving just because there is opportunity. If you're not sure of exactly how to get to, uh, or how to get involved in these type of trading opportunities or set up, then make sure you get connected with one of the mentors, Chris, or one of the, 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 the instructors, because we're going to be able to help you through that process. Listen here. There may be chaos in the stock market, but there's great opportunities to be able to trade the markets. And now that everyone's working from home, you're going to have a lot more time to be able to go ahead and look for those, uh, those short-term trading opportunities, just like Chris was speaking about. So get in there, get in the trading room, get active, and get uh, connected with the, your instructor because there are opportunities. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming in. We're going to see you guys back again next week. Uh, and so from Chris and from Tyson and from me, I want to wish you happy trading, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.